One last proof to go. All right, one more time with feeling times two. ABC is a parallelogram. G is a midpoint of EF. Oh, good lord, a midpoint. And then we have to prove that triangle AEG is congruent to CFG. So AEG. And then CFG. All right, so again, effective proof writers always plan it out first. Um, so we have ABCD as a parallelogram that may or may not come into in handy later. But I know G is a midpoint of e, G is a midpoint of EF. I can probably mark now. G is a midpoint of EF, meaning that GE and EF have to be congruent. Um, so it gives me a side. I immediately see another vertical angle here. Um, so that gives me an angle, so bam, if I just had another side, I'd be good to go. So it does mention that ABCD is a parallelogram. Remember, good proof writers always use their givens, or at least try to. Um, so I'm trying to think, like, what property of parallelogram would help. I don't think opposite sides are helping too much right now. Um, I could use the fact that top or bottom are parallel to maybe strike out another angle, but I did that already in a previous proof. Um, but, so I think the one I'm going to utilize now is the diagonals bisect one another. Um, at least I originally I thought I did. I just actually changed my mind uh, because EF is not actually a, a a diagonal. I don't know if that's actually going to bisect AC. I also don't know that G is the midpoint of AC, so that's not good. That's that's no good either. Um, so I think I'm actually going to have to use the properties of parallelograms um, that states that opposite sides are parallel. So I know these guys are parallel. And the reason that's important is because I can use EF as a transversal. If that's a transversal, that tells me that this angle and this angle, so the one that occurs around E and the one that occurs around F, have to be congruent because they're alternate interior. And I think that's how I'm going to write my proof because that gives me angle side angle. So once again, I have G as a midpoint. Uh, and that G midpoint gives me my first set of sides. I have vertical angles in the middle that gives me an angle and then I'm going to use the fact that the top and bottom lines in a parallelogram are parallel and then use EF as a transversal to use to find alternate interior angles congruent which completes my angle side angle condition. Um, so let's write it up. I mean there's nothing left to do that except just to do it. So we're going to have an angle side angle proof which are frankly my favorite types of proof. Don't ask me why I'm weird like that. Okay, so let's write this up. So the first angle actually results as a result of parallel lines. It's the alternate tier angles theorem. Um, but in our proof, we have nothing written. So let's first establish that ABCD is a parallelogram. Um, and that's because it's actually given to us. If it's a parallelogram that tells us that AB is parallel to DC, um, and that's going to be because of a property of the parallelogram. And if AB and DC are parallel, that tells me that's angle, and you know, let, let's pause here. Let's go back and actually number these things so I don't have to, to uh, I don't have to use a three-letter naming convention. Let's go three and four. Um, so that tells me angle one and angle two have to be congruent. And that's going to be because of the alternate interior angles theorem. You get a lot of usage out of that one. Uh, the side, the side length marked in green, that came as the, uh, through the idea of midpoint. So again, our proof is empty, so let's go ahead and uh, write the midpoint part in. G is a midpoint for uh, EF because it's given, which leads us immediately because of the definition of midpoint to include that EG has to be congruent to GF because of the definition of midpoint. And then our last bit is actually the easy one. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Um, and that's going to be because of the vertical angle theorem. So I met the conditions for angle side angle. 
Uh, so I can now definitely claim that triangle AEG is congruent to triangle CFG by the angle side angle triangle congruency theorem. We're all done. All right, guys. So that's that's the whole thing. That's the, that's the last bit we'll have to do for the semester. I promise the last video I'll shoot until the end of the semester. Um, but I can guarantee you this, guys. If you can do this review, you will destroy this final. I guarantee it. Like, if you guys can do this, every piece in this review, and you understood what we were talking about, um, you're going to be just fine in the final. Now, if you're not, I expect, expect Edmodo is going to be a hype all weekend, um, or my email is going to get pinged over and over again. Um, and come Monday and Tuesday, you're going to be in my room during, uh, well, so Spartan time. Well, there's Spartan time Monday. I take it back. So you're going to be in my room on Spartan time, before school, uh, and not after school on Monday, but after school on Tuesday is fine. Uh, so... It's lots of time and opportunity to get this done. Don't forget this also to practice multiple choice tests. You're not obligated to do any of it, but if you want to get a feel for what some of the multiple choice questions are going to be like, uh, I would definitely give that practice test a try. Um, again, prioritize. So you know what your grade is. So certainly if you think you can uh, deprioritize my test, do so. If you think you cannot, then make it a priority and come and see me, all right? It's a good luck. Don't freak out. Breathe deep. Stay calm. And you too will be okay. All right? So that's all I got for you guys. Good luck.